Hey guys, it's Thomas here with TechnoVision and welcome to the next episode of our Spigot tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be covering command args, which are going to allow you to create more advanced commands that have multiple words separated by spaces. And really, uh, the best way to think about this, and I'll have a little um, a little uh, graphic on screen hopefully uh, to explain this better, but a command has both the main command, which is just the first word uh, that you type after your slash in the, uh, in the game, and then there are an infinite amount of arguments that can occur afterwards separated by spaces. These are um, essentially just passed in words or, or numbers that can um, be used to uh, create more advanced commands. So that's what we're going to be doing today, and we can come over to our commands class, uh, mine is called tutorial commands. And inside of here, I'm going to make a, a new entry, make a few spaces, and I'm going to make another else if uh, so we can make this command. So for this new command we're going to make, uh, it's going to be called slash farm time, and it's just going to be like a fun sort of meme command. But uh, the way I want it to work for this tutorial is you'll do slash farm time, and then you specify the, uh, the mob that you want to spawn. Uh, you'll be able to choose between three or four different mobs, and then the amount that you want to spawn. And then once you run the command, it'll spawn that many of that entity or mob uh, right on the player's location. So we can do command dot get name dot equals ignore case, and we want the command to be farm time. Uh, with a uh, curly brace at the end, of course. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is check uh, after this command has been run slash farm time, uh, how many arguments uh, are inside of the uh, the command. We want to make sure that they're equal to or greater than two. So if args, and again, this args value, this is the list of arguments that I was talking about earlier. Uh, that is accessed from up here. Um, it's one of the things that's passed in by the Spigot API. So args dots length is greater than or equal to two. Um, so this if statement checks if there are at least two um, arguments, so at least two words after the main command. Uh, and if they're not, if it's shorter, so like if there's only one, um, like if it's farm time, here I'll make a little comment. Like if someone types slash farm time and then just like cow, and there's they're missing the third, um, argument here, then we want to send them a message. So else we want it to say player dot send message. And uh, we can copy this little section right here just so it looks nice and pretty. Um, so we want to send them a message, preferably with the uh, red chat color that just says um, how you're supposed to actually use this command. So in my case, uh, I want players to know that they have to use farm time. Uh, the mob, and then um, the amount. So that way, uh, if they don't use this command correctly, it'll just tell them. Uh, but now, if we uh, do have two arguments, then we can actually access our arguments. Now, because our arguments is actually a string array, the way that we access each argument is just by typing the name of the array, which is args, and then adding some um, uh, square brackets here and then typing in the number that we want. So zero would be the first argument, one would be the second argument, and so on. And that's because arrays start at zero, uh, but that's more Java knowledge. So anyway, let's actually get to the entity. So we're hoping that the first argument here on our, uh, our command is an entity type. We can get that by doing entity type entity is equal to entity type. And if you do dot value of, we can pass in a string and it'll get the entity um, that is associated with that name. So we're hoping that the first argument is a, uh, an entity. So we can pass in args zero and a semicolon at the end. Now, uh, this is great, but what if the player, instead of typing a valid entity, types something like seven or they type uh, hello, something that is not an entity? Well, we need to check for that. So. We have to actually make this a try catch statement. Make sure you surround this in a try catch statement. And we're catching an illegal argument exception. And we can name this E uh, and make sure that we uh, have some braces after this as well. Now, what this is doing is making sure uh, that this entity is actually valid. If it's not valid, then it will throw an illegal argument exception and we're just gonna catch that and send the player a message. And we can just copy this here player.send message and we'll just send them a message that says uh, that is not a valid entity and uh, it should return 
on its own, I believe. Yeah, return true on its own. So that's all good. Uh, but if we do have a valid entity, then we want to continue on by getting the second argument, which hopefully is some number. So let's just type like five here just so we can see it. Uh, because again, we do want the entity type and then however many we want to spawn. So uh, let's get the amount, int amount. And again, uh, you might think, well, you could do int amount is equal to args uh, one, which would get the second arg. And you're right, but uh, in this case, Java is considering the command here, this arg, uh, a, um, s an integer, or sorry, a string. We need the integer. So we can convert this string into an integer by doing integer dot parse int and just passing it in with a semicolon. And this is gonna convert this uh, string here of five into an actual number called five. Uh, so now that we have the amount, we can actually spawn the entity. And uh, the way that we spawn however much is specified is by creating a for loop. So just do for int i is equal to amount, or I guess we should do i is equal to zero and then i is less than amount. And then we increment i uh, every time. So uh, this for loop is gonna run however many times amount is set to. Uh, if it's set to five, it's gonna run five times, that sort of thing. Uh, and we wanna spawn the entity by doing player dot get world dot spawn entity. And then we need to pass in the location and we can just spawn it right on the player by doing player dot get location. And then we need the entity and we can do that by just typing in entity, which is what we set up here. And just add a semicolon. All right, so this command is actually completely done. Um, and we can just run through it one more time. Uh, so we're making sure that the command is actually farm time, which is this thing right here. If it is, then we check if there are at least two arguments. If there are not, it's gonna skip all of this code and just tell the player, oh, you did it wrong. Here's the right way to do the command. But if there are two uh, arguments here, then it's gonna try and get the first argument as an entity and get the amount as well. Uh, if that fails and you know it would fail because the entity doesn't exist, it's gonna send a, a message that says, oh, that's not a valid entity and then close the command. But if it does exist, then we'll spawn the entity however many times uh, the player specifies. All right, so now we just need to go to the main class, set the executor like we did last time. We can just copy the one above and change feed to uh, farm time. And then of course we have to go to our plugin.yml and we need to create another command here. Just copy and paste what's above. Um, let's name it farm time. And uh, we don't need an alias or alias or alias for this. So just delete that. And for description, we can just type uh, spawns a specified farm animal. All right, so we can file, save all, build, build artifacts, build, and I will see you guys in the game so we can test this out. All right, so we're inside of the game and what we can do is type slash farm time the name of the entity we want to spawn. So in this case, I want to spawn, let's say a chicken, chicken, and then uh, the amount. So let's spawn five chickens. And when we hit enter, there we go. Five chickens have been spawned. One, two, three, four, five. And we can do this with any, any mob. We could do it with, uh, let's try a cow and try two cows. There we go, two cows. Or even we could do a creeper and we could have three creepers. Uh, oh my god, I'm in survival mode. I totally forgot about that. Okay, so uh, you can see though that uh, the command is working and that you can change these arguments here to whatever you'd like and it will uh, change the outcome of the command. Now, one thing I should mention when it comes to entity types, not super important, but uh, you'll notice that I've been typing these in all capitals. Um, if for whatever reason you wanted to type like cow uh, with all lowercase letters and then like five, uh, you will see that it says not a valid entity. So that doesn't mean our, our uh, error checker is working, but the issue is a uh, spigot does not consider um, entity names that are in lowercase as valid entities. So we can fix that by going back to IntelliJ and just fixing one little line. Okay, so in IntelliJ, come back to your commands a class over here. And what we wanna do is make sure that whatever argument is passed in here for our entity type, which would be the first argument, we want to dot to uppercase. And what that's gonna do is just make sure that no matter if the player types the, uh, the string in um, lowercase or a mix of uppercase and lowercase or all uppercase, 
uh, it'll always make sure that the letters are all uppercase so that uh, it'll always be a valid entity regardless of uh, the casing. So now let's go check that out in the game. Okay, and we can just test this really quickly now that we're in the game with slash farm time and then a lowercase version like uh, let's spawn a blaze and then let's spawn uh, two. Uh, so there we go, we can see that we did spawn in two of them and we were able to do it lowercase. Uh, so now it's working. All right, so that's gonna about do it for this episode. Thanks guys so much for watching. I hope that sort of helps you understand how you can use arguments to make more advanced commands overall. And I will see you guys in the next episode.